Hello, I'm Barry Rainsford and I'm a crime writer. I'm represented by Paul Morton of the Bell Lomax Morton Literary Agency in London and I'm also a member of the CWA. And I'm making this video as part of an initiative organised by the CWA entitled Writers in Residence. The idea behind this series of videos is to enable uh, crime writers who, like myself, are members of the CWA to show you the spaces that we work in, our, our working spaces, and to talk about our books. Now, like most aspiring writers, I was writing part-time for many years before completing a manuscript that secured me a deal with my London-based literary agency. And even after the publication of my first novel, I continued writings part-time whilst holding down a job teaching inner city schools in Birmingham. 18 months ago, I decided that I really need to get serious about my writing, so I took early retirement and moved to North Yorkshire, where I now write full-time. I've just submitted the manuscript of a new novel to my agency in London. I'm also heavily involved in completing the final draft of another novel I've been working on for a couple of years. I'm deeply into research on two more projected novels and I've also been working on a screenplay of my published novel Borderline. Although it was published a couple of years ago now, Borderline still attracts a good deal of interest. And in fact, if it wasn't for the present coronavirus lockdown, I'd be busily preparing a presentation to the Yorkshire Antiquarian Society about the novel, about its premise, and about the research that I conducted while writing it. Um, the premise came to me almost as a fully formed idea. Uh, set during the 1984 miners' strike, it begins with a violent picket, at the end of which a uh, body of a man is found beaten to death. Uh, and with 300 police armed with batons and with 400 protesters armed equally with batons and weapons, the problem for the police becomes um, who actually killed this man in the midst of this violent picket. Of course, it's not just as simple as that. Crime novels never are, uh, because it soon becomes apparent that this dead man, this body that's been found after this picket, uh, is not quite all he seems. And in fact, he has a number of secrets, secrets that start to enmesh a number of forces around the politics of the time and around the pressures that were going on in society at that time. Interestingly, uh, an early reader was Kim Howells, the ex-Labour government minister in the early part of the 21st century, who took on the real-life role of M as chair of the Joint Intelligence Staffs. And he wrote to me saying that a number of the fictional items uh, of the plot and of the events in the novel were in fact things that were suspected to be happening at that period. And in fact, uh, the revelation only a couple of years ago of the activities of the SDS, the Special Demonstration Squads, is actually almost exactly what I was talking about in the novel and part of the premise of that particular fiction. I work on an iMac and I use Word. I'm not a great fan of laptops. I find it easier to think of a fixed computer in a set space as encouraging me the notion of coming to work. Although much of my research is conducted on a laptop or iPad and wherever possible I carry that out on location. In terms of inspiration, it tends to come from the what if style of thinking. I know that for some people like Ian Rankin, a file of ideas or clips of newspaper stories are used as a starting point, but for me it's very much the what if. if for example, Borderline began with the what would happen if a dead body was found in the midst of a riot with 600 people all heavily armed were gathered around? Where would you start to solve that particular crime? Having moved to North Yorkshire, another part of my workspace is our garden. We're fortunate living in the National Park and uh, that certainly provides chance for escape um, and those moments of reflection.
My current reading is working my way through the Mick Heron series of novels based on the Slow Horses, a series, a group of discredited MI5 officers. And I think what attracts me the most with the crime writing are those with interesting or convincing sense of characters rather than the plotting. My most recent read is by Kate Ellis. Uh, I had the pleasure to meet Kate at a recent CWA Northern Chapter lunch in Leeds. And like most of my fellow CWA writers, it's often hard to reconcile these lovely, warm, engaging people with the horrors that uh, they choose to write about. But um, let's hope they continue to do so and keep us entertained and compelled to turn the page for many years to come. Thank you.